Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting episode. In this episode we will be looking at native plants and how to design a really cool native garden. We're here at Botanic Gardens and their native plant ideas and there's a ton of ideas here that are really really quite cool and really again using star performance. These are plants that do really well in the Auckland conditions and have sort of scored basically 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 for being great plants and we've got a, quite a few selections uh, of, of different plants we'll take a look at. Of course there are the flowering natives, things like the hebes that are really cool to use and the leptospernums, that's the manuka. They give you a, a whole heap of flower colour and then you've got the foliage natives like the pseudopanixes and the uh, native trees like the pukas and all those sort of things that can really add some subtropical uh, vibrance along again with the uh, native nikau palm all adds to that sort of really cool native look and there's so many different colors so many different cultivars now you don't have to be sort of kept to just sort of the plain khaki greens there's lots of oranges there's plants for coastal conditions like some of the libertias and the carexes and also the hebes as well who do particularly well and there's some plants that we can shape into hedges like the um, the totras and the matapori blue which, which comes to mind and then also there are the ferns as well so a lot of cool native ferns which we'll also have a look at the star performers and the ferns things like hen and chicken fern so let's take a deeper dive and look at some of these really cool new zealand natives to see how we would possibly design something in our own gardens back at home okay let's take a look at the New Zealand uh, plants, the natives, and we're going to start off with the flowers. Now, just before we get to talking about the flowers, it's just quick want to mention about how our native plants and our flowers and flowering plants help our native wildlife. So we've got bees, insects, birds, lizards, moths, all sorts of different little creatures, and all sorts of uh, fungi out there as well. They're all interacting with each other in their own little ecosystems and it's called biodiversity so when you put in native plants it all kind of helps those creatures and organisms that have evolved with New Zealand's native uh, flora and fauna so if we talk about flowering plants we can have a look at the native trees first and now work our way back down to the ground covers so many of the flowering plants of New Zealand tend to be kind of a little bit small, a little bit insignificant, sometimes white, pink or red, um, but not really kind of standouts. But there are some standout performers. So we'll look at those ones. And the first one to really mention is the Purukawa. It's a real true standout. It's called the New Zealand Christmas tree. Named because it basically flowers over summer around that Christmas period. And the real standouts here are Metrosidrus excelsa, and there's one called Vibrance, which is a cultivar, and that is a star performer rated by Auckland Botanic Gardens as doing well in the Auckland area. One of my personal favorites is also Metrosidrus Mari Princess. It forms a trunk and so is normally uh, can be used as a street tree as well. Now for colder climates, because generally Metrosidrus is kind of preferred a little bit warmer, then the Southern Rata is probably the best to go for, and that's Metrosidrus Ambalata. Now, Purtakawas are medium-sized trees. You probably, if you're going to plant them, you need to plant them a little bit further away from the house and drains and things like that because their roots can spread a little bit. If you think about how a Purtakawa grows on the coastline, its roots tend to attach to sides of cliffs and spread out. And so, other than that, they are good choices. Now, there is a little dwarf, uh, Metrosidrus, called uh, Metrosidrus uh, colina uh, tahiti, but that is actually a... Uh, not a native to New Zealand, it is a more of a tropical variety. Now, the next standout for me would be the native Kofi trees. These are the Sephora species, and there's basically a few different types, but there's two main types the North Island, which is uh, Sephora tetrapatira, and the South Island version, which is Sephora microphylla. Microphylla means it's just got a smaller leaf and tends to be more cold hardy. Now the star performer rated by Botanical Gardens is doing well in Auckland conditions is Sephora Fulfida, Fulfida and it is a, a good plant and I would recommend it. Now if you've, these are small to medium sized trees, probably growing around about 6 to maybe 
10 meters in height and about the sort of six meters in width um, take a little bit of time to get to that sort of size but if that is too big for you but you still like the those nice yellow flowers which attract the tuis and the birds then there is a dwarf variety out there which is great for small gardens that only grows to around about one and a half to two meters and that's Sephora Molloy Dragon's Gold it's a more of a sort of shrub next tree down we've got Nightia Excelsior known as the Rewa Rewa or the New Zealand honeysuckle because the flowers kind of resemble the honeysuckle and they flower from spring to summer it's a tall upright tree probably a little bit big for most gardens although I have seen it used as a bit of a screen tree against a wall um, not too bad okay the next one we've got is the one is a lace bark Hoheria populinia and it has clusters of white flowers and it forms a small to medium sized tree fairly quick growing and it's great for a shrub border or a screen plant now we've, next we've got a mixture of trees sort of in shrubs this is the manuka and kanuka manuka more the tree manuka more the sort of sort of smaller tree or shrub and leptospernum scoparium is the manuka and this is the tree or the shrub that has been cultivated by nurseries and there's now a huge range of different colorful cultivars with lots of flowers a lot of them do seem to sort of flower almost year-round and they are now ranging in for some say from a shrub from about two to three meters high to ground cover types and one that stands out for me is a one called red damask now for smaller shrubs now because we're heading down in size uh, you can't really beat the hebes everyone knows basically what a hebe is but they're what they probably don't know is there's a lot of new varieties coming out and a lot of the new varieties are pest and disease resistant and they've got some amazing flowers and they've kind of crossed them over so you've got like ones that are, uh, have got sort of slightly gray leaves and, and quite large showy flowers and um, so you've got some real star performers there one is called hebe worry mist and another one is first light which i like and a hebe the gardener which is a latest hebe from jack hobbs a lot of these uh, hebes were bred by jack hobbs uh, who is the uh, manager of botanical gardens in auckland uh, another one i particularly like too is hebe worry image it's a good performer and pretty in pink also has the foliage and the flower color if you want both now for what for large white daisy types of flower you can you can't really go past the uh, the Marlborough rock daisy now I've grown this down in the South Island and it produces really large white flowers with a nice gray foliage and it does well in those colder climates stay down in Queenstown area around the lake and that botanical name is Pachystegia insignis so that's worth a try it's a sort of a sort of small uh, sized shrub around about a meter I believe and uh, works pretty well now for small yellow flowers followed by yellow or red berries then Karokia is a good cho a choice and you get a couple of different varieties here red wonder and yellow wonder there are some other varieties that are better for hedges but these are quite good for flowers and getting those berries so that's yellow wonder and red wonder good for colder climates so moving on now to say we've come down to the smaller plants we're going to move to the sort of reeds and grass types and you can't really go past the flaxes they've got some really cool flowers uh, so you've got two main types here have the formium cookianum which is the mountain flax has yellow orange flowers and these hang down on the stem formium tannix much larger plant but they produce red flowers and it's sort of upright in the stem and I would say for me personally I'd probably go for more the cookie animal just for its size put form your gets to quite large so unless you've got a very big area uh, they tend to get a bit unruly so they're great if you've got a swampy area great for sort of swampy conditions or a large sort of garden otherwise I'd go for a smaller variety the cooking anum and there's a lot of new cultivars out like um, I think it's emerald gem that's pretty good uh, and then there's a lots of uh, ones that are 
grown for their coloured foliage and to that sort of nice dark reds and purples and yellows. Next flowering plant is the Toi Toi and these have got large feathery plumes. There's a couple that I would recommend. The Dwarf Toi Toi which is the great for smaller gardens. This is the Chinacola Flavicans and great for small gardens it has a smaller feathery, feathery plume and then we've got the south island toe toe ostradaria richardi and this is uh, a slightly larger plant producing um, nice plumes but not too big uh, arthropodium serratum matapori bay is a great um, rangarangali, rangarangali, rangarangali that you can use in a shady spot under a tree it will flower white flowers in the summer and it's also great for foliage and great for that sort of dried shade sort of position. The native iris Libertia has dainty, very small iris type flowers. And the one I like using because it's also got orange foliage is the Libertia peregrinans. It's uh, one of my personal favorites. It's a good doer, good for coastal conditions. Has that sort of bonus of the white flowers and then after the flowers you get little berries. So um, after that we've got coming right down to the ground covers now we've got Pimelia prostrata, New Zealand Daphne very small white slightly perfumed flowers that look a bit like Daphne it's a good ground cover foliage and you get the bones of the small white uh, scented flowers now for standout flowers that are rare but worth having a go you've got the poor night's lily this is an amazing flower when it flowers but it, the only downside is that it can take 8 to 10 years for it to flower now you can put it in a, it's great in a pot, it likes to be a bit root bound, um, and, uh, but when it flowers it's got these large uh, sort of bottle brush, uh, red bottle brush flowers, really amazing, well worth the wait. Lastly we've got climbers, so, so basically we've got Tikamanthi is a good climber, it's got really nice tropical large green glossy leaves, and as a bonus you've got large sort of trumpet creamy sort of trumpet type of flowers and then the native clematis paniculata has white flowers so the couple are worth growing and as i said before about the biodiversity all these plants help to encourage bird life insect life all those bits and all those things that are native gives them a, a real boost okay guys we're going to take now a quick look at the some foliage standouts and some native ferns oh Okay, this is another really interesting native fern, Esplenium bulbiferum, the hen and chicken fern.